just fitted this Worcester 8000 system boiler. I'm not a Worcester guy usually. I don't usually fit Worcester boilers. I know usually push people towards Valent on Baxi. But to be honest, this boiler has won me over. And in this video, I'm going to show you what I like and what I don't like. Up there. And then you put the sheet on. And then you whack these two screws on. And then you put your little uh, jiggers on it. I did like the way the boiler was on. It's got a bracket just on the top here. And it slots in. Once it slots in, you basically open up these drums here. And then you just have to tighten up these nuts here. They are fiddly sometimes. If you don't get the boiler on properly, it's quite fiddly. You've also got to remove the trap. So once you fit the boiler, you've got to take the trap out, line these up with the trap in. And then add one. So if you go to add one, it's one slash. 1A, and that tells you the current status of the boiler. And if you go into the, the book in the back, it will tell you what that status means. Similar to a boiler, you press that. Very easy. It comes off on the top. It comes off. Take this off here. Actually, let's see how I locked it in. It's actually really cool, and the boiler's been running for ages now. A good couple of hours now, the boiler's been running, and you know, that's quite cool to touch. Just take that off. Screw it in the going way so you can't use it. Lift that off. And lift it and off. Literally. This boiler is a system boiler, it comes in two versions, you get in the 30 kilowatt and you get in the 35 kilowatt. It also comes in a combi, the combi ranges from 30 all the way to your big massive 50 kilowatt boiler. That's a massive combi boiler. I think that gives 20 litres of hot water, 20, 25, something like that, but you know, that's great. And then you also get a regular boiler in this, 30 to 50 kilowatts in the regular boiler. When it came to fitting the boiler, it was very easy. It's like any other Worcester boiler. You've got your little template. Bracket was really easy to fit. There's two screws on the top there. And then you put the sheet on, and then you whack these two screws on. And then you, your little uh, jig goes on it. The boiler, pipe up the boiler from underneath. Once you've piped it up, the best thing is the boiler's not get in the way, it doesn't get dirty. Then you can get the boiler, put it onto the jig, that's it, connect it up on the bottom, like you do on the old Baxi's, if you guys are familiar with Baxi's, the old main eco elites, the Baxi Platinums, um, you hang the boiler on, you connect it up from the inside, so it's, it's, it's a similar thing, it's very easy. One thing you do need to remember though, when you are fitting these boilers, you need to remove the trap, and the PRV, so Worcester have basically put the PRV on the front, which I'm going to show you, and they give you a PRV pipe, which you've manually got to open the boiler up, and move the pipe around. I don't know why they did that. That is one part I don't like about the boiler, but it is what it is. So this boiler is very heavy. You skinny guys are gonna to struggle to lift it. It's about 50, 55 to 60 kilos. You know, I was all right. I have my Weetabix in the morning, so I managed to lift it at a nice level. But if you can't, guys don't break your backs, you know, get a two man lift and get it on there. So that is the only other downside. The backs is I find, you know, the 800 and stuff like that, very light. Whereas this was extremely heavy. The boil is big, but guess what? It looks great. Look at it. It's a sleek design. You've got the nice display on the front. You know, it also comes in black. So if you've got units and stuff like that, that you want to match it with that are black, you can get it in black. I don't believe you pay any extra for a black boiler. So yeah, big girl, but it looks great. A big massive plus to this boiler is how quiet the boiler is. When I fitted it and I put it into commissioning mode, which I will show you guys how to do, uh, it come up with the flame symbol, so I realized the boiler was running, but I couldn't hear it. Now, the boiler right now is running right now, and you cannot hear it whatsoever. I'm standing right here, so I can't even tell it's running. The fridge, which is right here, you can hear the fridge, but you can't actually hear the boiler. That's how quiet this boiler is. So one big plus is this boiler is extremely quiet. What you need to remember is whenever you're fitting these boilers, always fit these filters. These filters are made by AD, and they're great quality design. You know, I'm a big fan of the AD filters, as you guys know. They come with Baxi boilers. Now they also come with these Worcester boilers. But they don't come with the Worcester boilers. You have to buy them separately. I believe they cost about 120 pounds, but they are great. And you need them um, to get the 10 years warranty or, you know, 12 years warranty if you are Worcester accredited. Boilers, you can uh, put external smart thermostats on like Nest and Hive. But what I do recommend you guys do is get the Worcester Bosch Easy Control, I think it's called. They work great with this boiler. Um, you can adjust loads of parameters and stuff like that. Worcester have made it in such a way that they work great with these. They are slightly dearer than the Nest, but it's, it's near enough about the same. If you're getting this boiler, it's a no-brainer to go for that, that thermostat. Now bear in mind, that thermostat will only do two zones. So you can only control the heating and the hot water with that. So if you have underfloor heating, it won't work whatsoever. You can't have the Worcester Bosch and an external one. It won't work. Just remember that. That's why in this installation I've had to fit a nest to do the hot water and heating. 
and I've got an, uh, a Honeywell third party one to do the underfloor heating. So if you are fitting this system boiler and you want to control it via the Worcester Bosch Easy Control and you want to control the heating and hot water via the app, via that program, via that thermostat which Worcester make, remember guys to get the diverter kit. You need that in order to control the heating and hot water. So remember that one guys. Enough of the talking now guys, let's zoom in and we're going to have a look at this interface now and I'll give you a brief little overview of how it works and things that I've figured out. So let's talk you through the display on the front. So as you can see, it's calling for heat. That's why the radiator symbols right there is flashing. It doesn't have hot water because it's a system boiler, so it's crossed off. You've also got the flame symbol at the top, which is telling you it's calling for heat. So let's move on from that. And let's say you want to start the boiler up straight away and get into chimney sweep mode. Very easy, minimum or maximum if you want to do your commissioning. Hold the OK button for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five bit longer than that say 10 seconds right now that is in maximum guys I'm, I'm not going to say a word so you can see how quiet this boiler is extremely quiet guys yeah so that's in maximum right now you want to put it in minimum very easy just go down that's it so the boiler is in minimum you've got a maximum minimum there very easy let's go back now if you want to go into service mode and check other things out you can check parameters what the ball is doing status codes and stuff like that refer to the manual i'll put it on the screen now in a couple of seconds you hold these two buttons here together one two three four that's it it will say al a once you get al a that will tell you the actual temperature so the flow temperature at the flu sensor so let's click al a and there it is right there so you can go back and let's go to L1. So if you go to L1, it's one slash one A, and that tells you the current status of the boiler. And if you go into the, the book in the back, it will tell you what that status means. Similar to a valent boiler when you've got the S codes and it's telling you what the boiler is doing. So it's quite good for fault finding and stuff like that. If you want to know what the boiler is doing, the pumps running, the fans running, what's going on. So that's great. So you can go back and you know, if, if you look on the side, you'll see a list and you can just run through all the list, you know, let's just, for example, let's just go to A.6, which is the flow temp, which is at 85 degrees. You know, it just, the list just keeps going on. Let's go back and you can check with the parameters with it. So that's really easy to use. So other than that, guys, it's quite easy. And you've got eco mode here. You can put the boiler in eco mode. So obviously it saves you a bit of gas and you can take it back out of eco mode. It's very easy. So what we're going to do now guys, we're going to look inside the boiler. The cover off the boiler, it's very easy to do, not like the other Worcester boilers, you know, just two probs at the bottom, very easy. So underneath the boiler you've got one here, so you press that, you press that, very easy, hook some from the top, and it comes off. Take the covers down you've got two prongs here you pull that forward it comes down you've got a manual gauge there which is great similar to the valence but for some reason the valence don't put numbers on it i don't understand why but yeah that's great now when you do get this boiler you've got to fit this prv pipe here in the back yourself this prv so you've got to take this trap off so the way you take the trap off is you put unplug this this thing here the bottom bit you press it right here it slots down right now it is actually full of water so you can see water coming out of the bottom so you undo it here and bravo we're out so here's the trap if you want to clean obviously take it apart give it a clean let's put that to the side so this is the prv pipe that you've got to connect and then when you do connect the prv pipe you've got to get this thing here i purposely left it off it basically fits on the boiler in between here somewhere and it holds that basically this pipe up in the back so you just remember guys you've got to fit this prv yourself and it brings the pipe down the bottom here so let's have a look at the boiler in general most have stuck with their old traditional diverter valve which is actually actually uses the same motor as the bmw folding mirrors which is right here, this little motor here. So they've used that same design. It's proven, it works. So 
as you can see by the housing guys here as you can see by the housing up here it seems it seems to me Worcester have gone with the same flow turbine as they had with the old Worcester 24i junior boilers so that's the flow turbine there obviously system boy so it doesn't have it they've got their Grunfoss um, pump which is great actually is it a Grunfoss I think so um, it's very small very quiet very easy to take off you know these prongs here similar to the old Worcester style PRV now look front facing guys Worcester have listened to us and they put the PRV here opposed to being you know right in the back they've gone for this uh, water pressure sensor here similar to what uh, Valent have the little mushroom type which is very easy to change you know take that off it tells you the water pressure sensor on the Worcesters so apart from that it's very easy to get to in here if I have a combi I'll open up a combi and I'll show you what a combi looks like but the systems you know to put this trap back in so it is quite difficult guys so if you put it in this way here make sure that washer's fully in turn it in at an angle so now you've done step one it's still quite difficult here but what you do you go all the way to the back here guys and once you're in at the back if you can see the back bits in then you go all the way up once you go up you press your lock and you're done so remember to put this bottom pipe on here guys as well and it's always easier if you empty the contents if it is full the trap is full empty it first before doing it guys you don't want to wet the pcb and stuff like that to take this off to put the trap on so the way to take it off guys hit it up from the bottom there hit it up from the bottom it comes out it's also great for use you know when you're boiler repairing anything like that you know it's, it's, it's really easy now to take the trap off so actually guys if you want to do it pull that off change the trap like that put the trap in like that i've showed you both ways now the guy's got no excuses put it in give it a push give it a push that's done let's click that back in very easy now let's take this cover off here let's take this off here actually let's see how hot it is it's actually really cool and the boiler has been running for ages now a good couple of hours now the boiler has been running and you know that is quite cool to touch let's take that off screw doesn't go anywhere so you can't lose it lift that up and lift it off and off it's literally as easy as that you've only got one screw Now I know why the boiler is so quiet because you can hear the fan running now. So they've, it seems to me they've created an enclosure here, the combustion chamber here. This chamber here it keeps all the sound in as well as the combustion. Um, you've got obviously your spark electrodes, electrification probes all up here. So your fan, your gas valve and stuff like that is here. They've given you, they've told you what to use, the Torx 10 if you want to calibrate it. The expansion vessel guys, this used to be on the back of the boilers if you look at some of my videos. I replaced my boiler and the expansion vessel is in the back, the PRV is in the back. But as you can see, it's here on the front now. I believe you just take this off, take this off. Maybe there's a little something there. Pull the expansion vessel out. Great idea, guys, with Worcester here. This top bit also comes off here, this little flap. Obviously, I've got the flue in the way here, so it makes it hard, life a little bit harder. But this does come off. Even I can still get it off even with the flue above it like that. That gives you so much access. I presume it's to clean heat exchange if you want to take this off, replace seals and stuff like that spark generators here in the back yeah so that's a great design let's put this back on very easy to put back it's like it's like lego or something like that it just clicks it's not one of them things that just go click 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 and you know it's in place so i believe it's a great build so we get this cover back in up and over it hooks onto a little hook right at the top there can you see that guys it's right at the top there there's a hook it goes over this little hook there on the top not sure if you can see it it's right there so that's done click it all back in place like lego and screw it back in guys that's really easy these side panels here can come off as well guys so you can literally pull these so you pull this off here this is the first time i've ever done this by the way so let's see how easy it is or hard so you can literally just pull these straight off as you can see now you can get side access to the boiler this is why it was slightly harder and then you can do the other side as well 
So you get it back onto here, back onto here, slide, slide, back on. That one comes off really easy as well. Again, like I said, this is the first time I've done it. And look how easy that was, guys. It made it really easy there. That's on, that's on, real time. That's on. Let's have, let's put the cover back on now, guys. Serial number of the boiler, it's always on the back of the case right here. Serial number. I'll blur that out, guys, so you guys can't. I'm not sure what you're going to do with the serial number, you know. I'll blur it out anyway. Put the top on like that, make sure it's hooked in. Give it a push. Click, click, like Lego. And that's it, no screws or nothing like that. So guys, I think this is a great boiler. Also, I've made a great product here at 8,000. I'd recommend it to everybody, installers, homeowners, landlords, whatever. Well, landlords, you might not want to pay this amount of money when you can get a Baxi 800, which does the same job, same amount of warranty. You may not want to pay that price. But if you want a smart boiler, looks good in the kitchen, does the job, you know, you can control it a little bit better than other boilers. It's more modern, it looks nicer. Disadvantage it is bigger, so, you know, it's not designed to fit in a cupboard, as you can see. It's, it's big for a reason, and they've made it look nice, I believe, for that reason, because it's big. Let's make it look nice. Advantage, disadvantage, I don't know. But yeah, it looks good. It's a great boiler, 10 years warranty. Time will tell how good it is, because you know, the Worcester boilers, you've got the leaking seals and the top lot and stuff like that. Time will, time will tell how good it is, but you know, I will be installing more of these. When I get a combi, when I fit a combi, I'll do a review on the combi, and hopefully I'll get a video fit in this boiler i would have done it on this job but i was rushed for time guys i tried making a, a few videos uh, i made a few introductions and stuff like that if i have i'll put it in this video somewhere you probably have seen it in the video or if it is or it isn't in the video but i will try my best to get more videos with the eight thousands or other boiler reviews but yeah overall guys i think it's a great boiler i think you should fit it promote it to your customers join the worcester accelerate club which i have today after fitting this boiler because I know we'll be fitting more boilers. Job done guys, like, subscribe if you want any more videos like this.